I bring this up today to all our viewers, as these are stories which may sound great in real life, but they're also myth busters and have a science behind them. Today we bring you Science Time Stories, a kaleidoscope of significant scientific developments that happened this week and snippets from the world of science. Today in the show, we will talk all about Project Dolphin, intranasal vaccines, side effects linked to overuse of CARA and how solitude affects, guess what, giraffes. Let's dive in. Friends, I would like to share with you the fact that dolphin is the national aquatic animal of India and their survival is increasingly at stake. Dolphins are intrinsically tied to our cultural ethos and history. They appeared in ancient classical art as rescuers of shipwrecked sailors and most of us adore dolphins, don't we? Who can miss their permanently smiling mouth? Most of these creatures roam in the oceans, but some do in fresh waters. There are at least 39 known species of dolphins, most of which are migratory. Dolphins face many threats, accidental capture in fishing nets, depletion of food resources due to global warming, chemical and noise pollution, and in some cases, direct killing for meat and fat. To survive, Dolphins need clean and quiet oceans, protected areas and people who care. The government of India has taken several measures to document the dolphin wealth of our country. One among them is an initiative called Project Dolphin. The Prime Minister announced the project on 15th August 2020. The Project Dolphin aims to save both river and marine dolphins. The Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change will implement it. And the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change has included Gangetic River Dolphin as one of the 22 species for taking up a recovery program under the centrally sponsored scheme, Development of Wildlife Habitats. The Gangetic River Dolphin has been listed in Schedule 1, thereby giving them the highest degree of protection. The Gangetic River Dolphin is found in one of the four freshwater dolphin species in the world. It is present in India, Bangladesh, Nepal and Bihar and is home to around half of the estimated 3,000 Gangetic Dolphins in the country. And moving on to story number two. Are you afraid of needles? Do vaccines give you the jitters? Well, nasal coronavirus vaccines might be for you. Even if needles don't scare you, Intranasal doses might still appeal to you. We'll tell you why. But before that, I should tell you that nasal vaccines are not available for use yet. Five such vaccine candidates are in the works in various parts of the world. Nasal vaccines seems to have a lot going for them. They're also being touted as game changers. Here's why. Nasal vaccines are sprayed into the nose, making them easy to administer. They need only one dose which means you'll have to take it once. And they appear to be far more effective than conventional shots. I mean, they seem to be more likely to prevent the infection, the spread and the development of the disease. Here's some good news. India's Bharat Biotech will carry out phase one trials for one such intranasal coronavirus vaccine, BBV154, developed by Washington University School of Medicine at St. Louis. This intranasal vaccine is not very different from Covishield. I mean, the two are developed using a similar method, virus vectors. Both these shots contain chimpanzee adenovirus, which acts as a vehicle that carries the coronavirus spike protein into the body. Our body recognizes the spike protein as an invader and produces antibodies as a result. So now, let's look at what makes intranasal vaccines promising. This is given via the nasal cavity, the primary site of infection. By spraying 0.1 ml of the dose into the nose, the immune cells residing in the nasal cavity, also called mucosal immunity, get activated. As a result, they keep the virus from infecting the upper and the lower respiratory tract. Doesn't this sound interesting? One can hope that the efforts to make one such Vaccine against COVID-19 pays off. And moving on to the next story. When 
the COVID-19 pandemic took off, we were all flooded with WhatsApp forwards claiming that specific home remedies could boost our immunity. None of these claims are supported by any study, yet many of us decided to follow them anyway. After all, the saying goes, it's better to be safe than sorry. However, a section of people took the saying a little too seriously. It has been reported that consuming kada in excess could cause a lot of side effects such as mouth ulcers, gastritis, internal bleeding, diarrhea and indigestion. Kara is an Ayurvedic drink containing black pepper, cinnamon, haldi, clove, gourd, ginger and tulsi leaves, all of which are readily available in most of our kitchens. In the right amounts, kara can have some health benefits according to doctors. But drinking a lot of kara could lead to severe side effects because of the ingredients that cause the body to heat up. And the doctors have warned about this. It has been reported that hospitals across India are seeing a spike of people complaining of side effects linked to the overuse of kara. So this brings us to a question. What is the right amount? Is it one cup or two cups for healthy individuals? Anything more than two could cause side effects. Be careful. And now let's take a look at our next story. We've all heard that good friends make our lives colourful. I mean, most of us would agree with that. Looking at our evolutionary history, scientists say cooperative bonds have helped humans thrive. It is one of the reasons why humans evolved to be so powerful. What's more, a lack of meaningful companionships can be stressful and hurt our mental and physical health. Solitude affects giraffes too. Yes, you heard me right. Solitude affects giraffes too. Researchers have found that lonely female giraffes are less likely to survive than their gregarious counterparts. For five years, researchers at the University of Zurich in Switzerland followed more than 500 female Maasai giraffes in Tanzania. The goal was to study the social network among these animals. And their study revealed something astounding, that female Maasai giraffes tend to form lasting bonds with each other. Female giraffes that stay together have a higher chance of survival than their more socially isolated counterparts. Female giraffes face threats from poaching, stress, malnutrition and diseases. By forging social bonds, these animals share knowledge about food sources, care for the young and ward off any unwanted attention of the male giraffe all of which trigger stress. And with that, friends, this is a wrap of this edition of Science Time. Stay with us every Friday at 9pm. Keep watching India Science. Namaskar. Mm -hmm.